Hello, Corey Reese here from Corey Reese Photography, and I recently purchased the Roka 9 35mm Cine Lens T1.5. I've seen mixed reviews about the lens as far as performance and sharpness, so I said, you know what, let me test the lens out myself against a couple other lenses that are known to be nice and sharp. The Canon 50 1.2 sells at about 1600 new, the Canon 50 1.4 sells at about 350 new, and the Roka 9 35 coming in in the middle, price wise, at about 500 new. The quick test that you're about to see is in no way scientific, but because I'm a photographer that shoots video, I decided to go with still shots with the stills resolution coming in at 5760 by 3840 versus the video would have been full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. Now for the test. I set up my Mark III on a tripod and measured out the minimum focus distance for each lens. The 50 1.4 minimum focus distance was about 17, close to 18 inches. The 50 1.2 was about the same, a little over 17 inches. And the 35 was about 12 inches. I focused manually the best I could for each lens and took the shot. Now let's go over to Lightroom and see the results. Okay, so now that we on the PC, I decided to stop over and Zoom Browser first because Zoom Browser has the ability it can show me where the point of focus was at as well as the actual camera information so you guys can see which uh, photo was shot with what lens. So this first photo here, as you can see, the shooting information that it was shot with the 51.4 at 1.4 at 160 on the shutter speed. The next one, this is the 51.2 shot at 1.4, same shutter speed. And the last one was actually shot with the Rokinon, and as you know, um, it doesn't have any electronics, so it doesn't pass over the information over to the camera that can translate to the computer. So if I click on this first image, which was the 51.4, and looks like the point of focus, I was trying to get this complete in focus, but to me it looks like the focus may have shifted a little bit to the just add water versus kind of this complete logo here. So if I click over once, this is actually the 51.2, and the focus looks a little more even than the fall off that was happening with the 1.4. Alright, so now let's go to the 35. So the 35, automatically, like the contrast as well as the sharpness looks a lot cleaner on this lens than the previous 250s. So now let's go into Lightroom so we can go ahead and zoom in and look, get a little bit more detail on what's happening. Alright. So now that we're in Lightroom, let's take a look. This is the first one, the 51.4. And like I said, it looks like that focus shifted more to just add water versus the Spanish version of just add water in the complete. So now let's go over to the 1.2. The 1.2 looks a little more even, but at the same time, it still doesn't look completely sharp. Okay, so let's back out and click on the Roka 9 version. And let's go ahead and zoom in. And I guess I really don't have to say nothing because you can see for yourself that this, this image looks sharper than the previous two. And what I noticed too, I guess because this lens is actually calibrated for T-stops versus aperture, look how it handles the whites. And if you look over here in the histogram, you know, it's, it's not really any super blown out areas. But if you look at the one, two, it looks like that lens handles that white area a little differently. And if you look over here in the histogram, it's definitely some clipping happening over there. And as well as on the 50, one, four, same thing over there. Look at the highlights over here. Okay, so let's move on to the next image. And this actual image was shot at the same settings pretty much. And as you can see, it's still blown out now that this object is mostly white. So if I click over here to show the highlight areas that's blown out or clipping, you see that this red area represents clipped highlights. So that's the 1.4 version. The 1.2 looks like it's a little more clipping. And this is the Roka 9 version. Looks like it has less clipping out of the previous two images. So I'll go ahead and take that off. 
and click back on the one four version and go ahead and zoom in here and right away we see there's definitely some color fringing going on um, that can easily be corrected let's first go ahead and just take this take the whites down a little bit and maybe the exposure and go down here and take that color fringing out okay all right so that's the one four so now let's go over to the one two and we zoom in and it looks like it's not any color fringing happening which is a good thing so we don't have to really do much on that but we can definitely have to bump down the exposure some because it was blown out some maybe bump the whites down all right zoom out so now for the Rokinon version let's go ahead and zoom in and once again I can definitely see this text is supposed to be all black so it's definitely some color fringing happening on this particular shot as well which same thing we can fix with that little option there and we can bump down the whites a little bit and exposure some just to kind of make sure that it's not clipping All right, so zooming in, this is the Rokinon version. This is the one, two. And here is the one, four. All right, so I'll let you draw your own conclusion on how my information was presented. Like I said, this is not scientific in any way. Just how I decided to test it out. I will create a link so you can download the images and kind of see for yourself on your computer and go from there. All right, I hope this was helpful.